8 and 41. Oh, I want to share this with you so bad today. And behold, there came a man named Jairus. And he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house. For he had an only daughter about 12 years of age. And she was dying. But as he went, the multitudes thronged him. The multitudes thronged him. Get picture okay get the picture the multitudes thrown him just all around him now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any came from behind and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her flow of blood stopped. <laughs> Jesus said, who, who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes throng and press you, and you say, Who touched me? Really? Jesus said, Somebody touched me, for I perceived power going out from me. I'd like to preach for just a few moments from the subject of the forgotten who. The forgotten who. Father, you've put it in my spirit. The story, the sermon, the message, and what is applicable to us. Now, Lord, help me deliver it. Right now. Thank you for this testimony today. That has encouraged me, but has encouraged others in this room. Brother Bruce doesn't even know the situations in this room that needed to hear what his testimony is today. Thank you for that. Now, I anoint these lips of clay that I could say something to encourage, inspire, and challenge. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. You may be seated. May the Lord bless you. You know, as you read through the Bible, we're the final hundred days of the year. I'm not sure what day this is, 40, 39, somewhere around there. But as you read through the Bible, sometimes it's good to leave, especially the Gospels, and you're reading the Gospels and the story of Jesus. Sometimes it's good to leave the miracles and look at the individuals. Imagine what many of the people were dealing with and specifically how long. We rejoice over the stories and we rejoice over the miracles but spotlight the person sometime. Just try to step in their shoes that may be what they are or were dealing with. What one man said to Jesus... Sir, I've been here 38 years and nobody, I, I don't have anybody that will help me and put me in the water. 38 years. Others we don't even know. We don't even know how long. We would, just, we would just have to assume. Uh, suppose the man with the withered hand. I, 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 I don't know. Some conditions were from birth. Many of the blind people from birth, they were blind. The deaf, the dumb, some of them, it was just conditions from birth. So however old they were, and the Bible doesn't tell us, it's that many years. Bartimaeus sitting by the wayside, the Bible says, begging, begging. Imagine the individual, I've never seen 
anything. I don't know what anything looks like. Somebody say amen. amen. Man with the withered hand. Was he born that way or did something happen? And all of a sudden that hand one day it felt a little funny. Some tingling sensation or whatever. And before you know it here he is in this condition. And no matter what condition it is, it makes you feel sometimes ostracized. It makes you many times go inward. You become uh, very private. At times you, when you go to sleep at night or you try to go to sleep at night, you, sometimes all you can think about is your condition. These people would try to rest knowing I, I'll try to rest, but tomorrow I'll, they'll pick me up and lay me beside the wayside and I'll, and I'll beg. I'll beg again. I can't see anything, but I'll beg again. I can't speak, but I'll, I'll do what I do. I cannot hear, but I'll go. I can, I'm crippled. I cannot walk, but who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Was that man that they tore the roof off and let him down in front of Jesus, was he born that way or did something happen? Because we know both, both have happened in the word of the Lord. Some were hurt and became that way. There's all kinds of stories. I'm just simply asking you to spotlight the person, not just not just what happened, but, but think about how they feel because you and I many times are the same way. We're dealing with a condition. We have a tendency. We know others are maybe fighting it, but sometimes we feel alone. Sometimes with whatever we're dealing with, whether it's depression, anxiety, major disease, whatever it might be. Many others have it, but there are times you just feel like I am the only one dealing with this. I'm the only one battling this depression. I'm the only one still grieving my family member. I, 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 I'm the only one. And you seem to go inward. What I find interesting about Jesus is how he takes time with individuals. How he, he's so powerful and he's so amazing and so incredible, God incarnate, and could have done this thing so differently. He could have been a Jesus wave. He could have been a miracle wave and just... Walked through cities and just, just did his hands like this. And all of a sudden, everybody is healed. But he didn't do that. He stops and talks to the individuals. A blind man sitting here and he says, what would you like for me to do for you? <laughs> Bartimaeus was like, really? <laughs> Is it not that obvious? I just need you to tell me. I'm, I'm, this is the kind of God that stops and talks and touches a man that for 38 years he struggled. Now imagine that the condition went beyond the condition and developed into other things mental struggles and all kinds of struggles that go along with it because the condition just continues to last. The blindness, the withered hand, all of these things. Jesus even walks up to a tree and looks at a little short guy and says, I need you to get down from the tree, Mr. Keebler. I'm going to your house. You must have low elf esteem. I'm going to your house today. The individual. I'm just, I'm amazed at the God that could have done so much stopped for so many individually. But he knew his time was short. He knew from the beginning when he started his ministry at 30, he knew his time was short. He knew it. this is not going to last long. I, 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 how about, I must be about my 
father's business. That means, so as the disciples become closer to him and they start learning more about him and he starts giving them more information, they become a part of the busyness of the kingdom. Sure. Not just the kingdom, but the busyness. Because Jesus says, I won't be with you always. I'm, I'm, I'm going to depart from you so we won't be together always. So this this. This hurry up, this, we got to get going, we got to keep going, we got to keep moving because Jesus is busy. We got to get to this town, we got to get to this festival, we got to get to this place, we got to get to this village, we got to go over here, and we got to go over there. So that mentality was in the minds now of the disciples. Let's move, let's move, let's move. Time was important. And that time became urgent for those disciples. They felt like it was their responsibility. Let's get him here. Let's get him to this place. Let's get him to that place because he says he must be about his father's business. Which brings me back to the story. A man, a ruler of the synagogue, Jairus, comes to him and says, my little girl is sick. I don't know if you remember me preaching an awakening in the house, but we talked all about Jairus and his family and his story, amazing story, his little 12-year-old girl. By the time they had gotten to her, she was dead. But on the way there, crowds. See, the more Jesus did, the more news traveled. And people started telling, he, he, he come see a man that's told me everything that I've ever done. Hey, what, what, what are you doing walking around with that? You used to lay on that mat. What are you doing carrying around? Uh, a man named Jesus healed me, and I, hey, he told me to take up my bed and walk, and that's what I'm doing. The blind man, the deaf man, the, the, the mute, the, the, the withered, all these things. <laughs> and news travels, there he is. There he is. There's that Jesus. There's that Jesus. And so multitudes begin to gather around him. For the Bible says, Now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years. That says so much just in one line. That poor woman hemorrhaging for 12 long years. Struggling, the condition last 12 years, all these days, all these months. And she has become no doubt depressed, no doubt discouraged. Imagine the battle within herself. Imagine the struggle within her. And she cannot control the flowing of blood coming from her body, hemorrhaging from her body. And she has no control of it whatsoever. Oh, dear God. What am I, what am, why, why am I even alive? This, 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 this kind of uh, quality of life is not worth living. Why don't you just take me? Why are you leaving me around? And I can't stop hemorrhaging. I don't know. I'm not a woman, so I don't know all the incredible feelings that she had and the, and the struggles that she had and how she must have felt and how the law looked at her and how people perceived her. <laughs> but one day, Jesus come passing through the city. In 12 years... She had spent all her livelihood on physician, physicians and could not be healed by any. I don't have any money. I've spent it on doctors. I've spent it on medicine. And there is nothing left. I, I, all I have left is this moment. All I have left is this moment. Jesus is walking. And she comes from behind. He is not in her progression. He is where, she is where he has been. She is not in where he's going. She is in where he already stepped. <laughs> and she reaches out. The, the, this weak, frail body 
hemorrhaging for 12 years. The loss of blood daily is incredible and she musters up enough strength and as Jesus walks by, coming up from behind, she, she with one last bit of effort and energy, she plunges toward him and grabs the border of his garment intentionally and she touched the hem of his garment. And Jesus said, who? Who touched me? Imagine the multitudes that had thronged him. And as he's walking through the crowd, all these multitudes are here. And Jesus says, who touched me? Jesus, Jesus, we got to keep moving. Jesus, we, 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 we got to keep going. We got we to gotta get to the next town. You, gotta, you, gotta, you got Jairus over here. He's, he's expecting to be here. And once we get done with Jairus and his daughter, we got, we got another village that we got to go to. And we got another. Jesus said, who touched me? Jesus, you, you, I, it could have been anybody. It could have been anybody. And, and, and it wasn't any of us. We, we didn't touch you, but I'm telling you now, we, we, we've got to keep moving. And so in this, in this realm of kingdom work, in this realm of about my father's business, the church if you will, gathered around Jesus. We got to keep moving. We got to keep progressing. We got to keep going forward. And Jesus says, wait a minute. I'm stopping right here until I find out who touched me. You want to keep going, but I got to find the who. And if I keep going, they will become the forgotten who. Somebody shout hallelujah. I know you are busy, and I know I've told you that we got to be about the Father's business, but we cannot get so busy that we forget the who that is needing something. Don't get so progressive that you forget the who. Don't get in such a hurry that you forget those that are struggling individually. Clap your hands and give God some glory. We got to go here and we got to go there. And dear God, aren't we busy? <laughs> dear God, aren't we busy around here? We're busy with the church. We're busy with a, a, a men's night, a women's night, a student night. A Christmas banquet, uh, a work day, which is amazing. <laughs> I might add, we got musicians practice. We got we got this that we got to do, and and I and I've got my own stuff that's going on. But brothers and sisters, you cannot get to the point. The church can't rush Jesus along in the service that we overlook an individual that is struggling, an individual that needs. I gotta touch him. I gotta touch him. I gotta touch him. Somebody is here today that if you're not careful, you'll be rushed in with the multitude. But I'm here to tell you that the Spirit of the Lord is saying, Stop and let me talk to the who. Stop and let me address the who. And what about it? Who is it that's in this room right now that feels ostracized, that feels all by yourself? And what would it do today if he stopped and he turned around and he looked at you and said, you touched me. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If you think Jesus didn't know who touched him, you're crazy. If you think Jesus was really trying to figure out who touched him, yeah, but there were so many just... Folks, this is God incarnate. This is the Almighty in a robe of flesh. And he knew who it was that touched him. He knew who it was that was behind him, not in front of him. And he knew that the disciples was only concerned about where they were going, not the who of where they had been. 
And he asked who touched me, not for the daughter, but for the church. He says, who touched me? Oh, my God. This rocked my world when the Lord spoke this into my spirit. He said he knew who touched him. He knew exactly who it was. He knew her condition and every part about her. He turned around and spoke to her. But you've got to understand he was doing this because he wanted the church to know, don't ever get so busy that you forget the who. Don't get so busy that you forget the individual. Hallelujah. Sometimes if we're not careful, our services will just move us through the multitude and keep us from stopping and touching the individual. And do we look like the church that day? Do we, are we a picture of the group that day of Jesus and his disciples? Is Jesus having to stop and pull the church back? There rushing and Jesus says who touched me he knew who touched him but the problem was they didn't know they didn't know and and and, and honestly it wasn't about who had touched him it was about where we got to go and what we got to do and, 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 and so many important things that are on the agenda but the agenda can never be bigger than the individual you ain't listening to me <laughs> somebody shout hallelujah Jesus said who touched me and all denied it all denied it wasn't me wasn't me wasn't me I know the church didn't touch me. <laughs> when all denied, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes throng you and press you, and you say, who touched me? In other words, it could be anybody. Exactly. You're letting people just live on a, on a brush by touch. You're happy with people just brushing by us going through the crowd and then barely, oh, it could have been anybody. All kinds of people are touching you and you're happy with some just touching. But he said, I didn't come here for them to just touch me. I need to stop. I need to bless them. And I need you to do the same thing. Don't get so busy that you can't stop. My God, this has rocked my world. This has rocked my world. But Jesus said, and this woman for 12 years finally said, I'm a nobody. I'm a nobody. The law looks down at me. Men look down at me. Family looks down at me. I can't stop hemorrhaging. I'm weak. I don't even want to get out of bed. I am a nobody. But Jesus didn't say nobody touched me. Jesus said, somebody touched me. And church, you better get it in your heads. Whoever touches me is somebody God have mercy. I wish I could preach like I felt this. I don't care who you are today. You are somebody and you have a right to touch the master. <laughs> somebody touched me and they pulled something out of me. Now, when the woman saw that she was not hidden, all of a sudden, 
she came trembling, falling down before him. And she declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. Jesus, for 12 years I've been hemorrhaging, for 12 years I've been flying, but I had a flow of blood. I've been weak and I've been tired, I've been in this, that, and the other. And this is my name. And Jesus said, <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know. But these dummies didn't know. And I didn't need you to tell me. I needed you to tell the church because they've gotten too busy. You ain't listening to me. Some of you don't know the stories of people in this room. You know why? Because you're too busy. Some of you show up late and leave early. You're too busy. You're too tired. You're too weak. You got too much to do. We got to move the church along. We got to get here. No! Sometimes we just got to stop and say, Somebody! Somebody touched him, and we want to hear your story. We have not forgotten the who. (laughs) And he said to her, you got that scripture? That one right there, that verse number 48. And he said to her, if you don't, you might have it. And he said to her, Nobody be of good cheer. Listen, between the testimony, she went from somebody to a daughter. I wish you felt good. I wish you liked good Holy Ghost preaching. Because that ought to make you shout at my tie. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, when he first talked to her, he said, somebody touch me. And when she told her testimony, he said, daughter, (laughs) my God, take time and stop, stop. Stop the service. Stop the schedule. Quit worrying about what's next and quit worrying about... Oh, that, that Brother Bruce and Bishop, they talked a lot, quite a bit of time. You reckon that's the sermon for today? No, I got that, baby. Uh, we're meeting some folks. What do you do scheduling some dinner or some lunch so close to church time? Boy, it's quiet. Because you're better at scheduling a lunch than you are stopping and talking to the daughters. Jesus said, Stop. Who touched me? Well, it wasn't any of us. Oh, I know. (laughs) And you're fine if they just brush up against me. But if I've been so long with you that you don't understand, I call them out of trees. I call them from waysides in poor and raggedy clothes and say, what can I do for you? I catch them on porches that have been laying there for 38 years and I tell them, you don't need anything in that water. All you need is me. Rise, take up your bed and walk. I never taught you all to rush through the multitudes. And even when I gathered more than 5,000, we still fed Every <laughs> I taught 5,000, but we fed every one. God have mercy. I don't know if you're getting this or not. My message went out to over 5,000, but when it was over, one. Two. It's going to take forever. Three. Four. Five. Jesus, we got, we got five, six, seven, 
Jesus, shut up, John, you're a basket case. (sighs) My message goes to the multitudes, but I'm going to talk to the individual. I can't stand this today. I'm preaching to Denny Livingston today. Oh, my God. Help me preach to the multitudes that feed the individuals. Woo. God, (laughs) it's my journey partly because I was too busy. It's my journey to slow me down because I can get impatient and I can get in a hurry. It's part of my journey to stop and talk to a doctor. Stop and talk to a nurse. Stop! Talk to another person battling cancer. It's part of my journey. Well, God, whatever it takes, stop us. Find the who and quit worrying about the what. Quit worrying about what we do and get back to worrying about who we do it for. Stand to your feet today. You feel alone. You feel alone. You feel afraid. Jesus said, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. Go in peace. Why would he stop? He was on his way to Jairus' house. Why would he stop and put that poor mess and this man didn't argue about it? If anything, what he saw Jesus stop and do helped him understand this same Jesus. He'll take time for her and he'll take time for my baby girl. <sighs> You're here in this room right now and your condition has made you feel ostracized. There's others, but you feel like you're the only one battling the demon of pornography. You feel ostracized. God, God, I feel unworthy. You're sitting here battling depression and you know you know there's others but for whatever reason you feel so alone and you don't feel like he's on his way to you you feel like you have to be on your way to him and that's what you have to do you got to reach out and touch him you're here in the church And the pastor has reminded the church of Jesus saying, who touched me? I'm saying, who? I know who did it. But you need to know the who, lest they become the forgotten who. Lest they become just another number in the crowd. (laughs) Every head bowed and every eye closed. He knows my name. He knows my name. He knew her name. She was never a nobody. She was always a somebody. Then became a daughter. Be of good cheer. Your faith has made you whole. I don't think I have any. Yeah, you got faith. You got faith. And the church is stopping right now. Right now. We're stopping right now. Why do you think 
I'm so funny about the service, about telling you, get in this service. Don't run in and out. Don't fill up the lobbies. Don't fill up the hallways. Get in the service. Why? It's because I haven't forgotten the who. And I know that in the service today, there's a who that is hungry. There's a somebody that feels like a nobody. There's a daughter that feels like an orphan. (sighs) My God. I almost feel like this altar call is not just for the ones that need it. That is the who. But I also feel like it's for the church that has gotten so busy with things. That we have forgotten the who. The who is that snotty-nosed brat of a kid that one day could be a missionary, an evangelist. He could be the who. She could be the who. You never know. Stop and take time with them. As every head is bowed and every eye is closed. You may, the enemy's probably already telling you, don't, don't, don't do this. Don't you, th- don't you think in her weakness and her hemorrhaging, the devil is saying, are you crazy? Why would you, why would you put forth the effort of reaching out to him? It's not going to do any good. You're a nobody. You're a nobody. That's what the enemy's telling you today. Don't, don't. (laughs) You know what he's getting ready to do. He's going to have you raise your hand. He's going to have you walk to the altar. Don't, don't mess with that. Oh, we messed him up today. Because we have not forgotten the who. We've not forgotten you today. And I don't care if you're a member of this church struggling in something. Or if you're a guest and you're struggling with something. The who can be anywhere, anybody, any place. If I've preached to you and you know without a doubt, Pastor, I'm the who. <laughs> I'm the who. I, I'm why you had to preach this today. I'm the who. I I have a condition and I I feel so alone sometimes with it. I feel out of place. I feel you feel ostracized, which is what the enemy wants to do because if he can get you alone, he thinks he can take you out. 